Welcome back to Open Line. I have knocked on wood. I've crossed my fingers that all of our technical glitches are done for tonight. Tanika Vercher is joining us from Antioch Metro Council member there, talking us about growth in that area. And we also have Rita on the line. Rita, can you hear me okay? Yes, I hear you now. Oh, Hi, fantastic. Okay. It's so good to hear your voice. <laughs> um, go ahead. The floor is yours, so you can have your say. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. <laughs> got the problem worked out. Yes. But like I was saying, uh, Tanaka, yes, I'm in your district, and I do appreciate your efforts in terms of mor uh, the moratorium. And I want to ask about the uh, Tanger outlet. Uh, uh, is that still something that's happening? Uh, and also the area where Sterling used to be. Uh, is there anything happening in that area? All right, Rita, I'm going to hang up and let Taneka answer your question. So thank you for calling in and thank you for sticking around through that. We appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Taneka, let's talk about the outlet mall. What's the latest? So, so the latest is um, there, there's a lot of interest uh, for, for that development over there, the, the Century Farms development, and the developers over there are working extremely, extremely hard in, in moving that, that project forward. As it relates to, and, and I'm speaking, those aren't my district, those are um, District 32 and District 33, respectively. But the, the Starwood uh, property, uh, many of us, um, and I think I picked up on the voice who Rita is, um, so she's been a, a neighbor out here for a long time so she remembers the glory days mm -hmm. of, of, of Starwood as, as many of us do um, I don't foresee that 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 property being um, uh, that that type of that type of venue um, but there's been a lot of interest uh, for for that for that property also um, and, and rightly so um, it's, it's hard to find land um, uh, of that mass, that, that massive uh, here, vacant land mm -hmm. uh, like that here, here in the city. So that's, that's one of the appeals to, to a lot of developers. But nothing to announce quite yet or no deals that are getting ready to, you know, be inked for that area. You know what it is you want to see and what it is you don't want to mm -hmm. see on on that on that property because of the the neighboring neighborhoods and uh the schools there too how long have you lived in the antioch area um 20 let me see 20 21 years oh wow how have you seen it change personally um um I remember when I first got involved in this, um, I started out my involvement on the, the school side. Uh, my kids were school age, and I can recall uh, the school buses never never running on time. So I was late to work um, almost every day, you mm -hmm. know, jeopardizing, <laughs> you know, with me being able to keep my job. You know, it's, you know, at some point, you can only tell your supervisor so many times my child's school bus was running late, my right. child's school running late but I wanted them to have that experience so needless to say I, I, my children started being just just carpool I couldn't run that risk so I would say um, back then um, and my daughter is um, she's 26 now and my son is 16 wow. uh, I'm, I'm dating myself <laughs> but yeah <laughs> but obviously your heart is in this community this is personal to you yeah, it's it's it's, uh, it's personal, and um, when I ran, um, I, I I really take my oath seriously and the commitment that I made to the people that really entrusted me to improve their 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 quality of life. Um, it's, it's so many neighbors that I speak to, and I'm saying just just continue to be patient with me. I am I am working as hard and as fast as I can, and and in six years we've we've done a lot of things. We've done a lot of great things. You know, the the district is the, one of the fastest improving districts here in the city so we've we've done some great things in in the six years we just we just need to get this right to carry the community forward for the next 20 25 years and that's what this is about this isn't a, a short-term uh plan this is a, this is a long-term plan a, a caller who couldn't stick around on the line but left a comment also on our facebook and said um since the planning commission says they don't have the capacity um, to deal with a study, whether it be four months or a year or whatever, how long, um, to really look into what's needed and what's not in Antioch. So the, the caller said, why not have volunteers help? It, is that something worth considering? I think, I think um, you know, our, our volunteers, they serve the city in, in um, various ways already from, from, mm -hmm. from boards and, and commissions. 
Um, I don't know what that protocol would be for, for the planning department, but I think it's a great recommendation. And I will say this, it wasn't one that, that was suggested by, by the planning department or, or the planning commission. So that's, uh, I don't know who that caller was, but I, I think that's a, a fantastic idea. I, I think what that caller is saying that a city of our size and, and the revenue that, that we collect, we, we should never be saying we can't do something. Something and then also do. on our Facebook. I, I think that's a, a fancy. Sorry, I was just trying to check all our other Facebook <laughs> comments, but I turned our stream on. <laughs> stay, stay with me, Carrie. It's stay me, with me too. I just want to respond to everybody's <laughs> questions, and that was um, TL who sent that in. So thank you very much. Um, somebody else said they are building apartments on every corner. It is so overcrowded, and. And TL chimed in again, just way too overcrowded. So what you have said tonight is echoed by some of your constituents, and I know you're not surprised about that at all. Many um, leaders will say cities need to, people need to live, work, and play in their neighborhoods. So what about the play component when it comes to the parks in the area, the open space? How is that looking? So um, it's, it's like like with the other resources, um, it's, it's, it's coming along just at just at a slower pace than than the growth. So it's, it's, it's in the same vein as with our schools. When these amenities come online, they're they're already at capacity. Um, so it's, it's it's like we we it's, it's almost as if we, we can never we can never get ahead because we're not we're not we're not planning for sustainability. Mm -hmm. We have a caller on the line. Tracy has just called in. Tracy, you're you're on. Thank you for your call. Go ahead. Yeah, it just seems like that maybe more of us run for office. <laughs> it just seems like that's how we're going to get people because we can't. Help. Tracy, we're that, hang on, Tracy. Uh, Tracy, we're having a hard time. Tracy, can you hear me? My life. So it just it inspires me to see you both out here because it just seems like that's something I need to you know, use my voice for government because I think that's the only way we're going to get things done. Tracy, I'm sorry, but we could not understand that whole phone. It sounds like you're muffled into your phone. I don't know if holding it a little bit further away might help a little bit, but we couldn't understand you. You want to give it one more try? Tracy, are you there? Okay. Uh, Tanika, I'm, I'm guessing that you couldn't hear that either very well. No, I, could, I, could, okay. I couldn't make out what Tracy was saying, but uh, thank you, Tracy, for calling yeah. in call back in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously people love this community and want to see the best for it. And I think that's why a lot of people feel about their little um, neck in the woods around Nashville is that everyone's fighting for the best thing. Uh, do you feel like your voice is heard? Uh, you know, I, I, I do, but, you know, I'm, I'm, we're just trying to shift the conversation that, you know, as a city is not a one size shoe fits fits mm -hmm. all. And, you know, um, I believe one of the commissioners said the, the reality of it is, is that, you know, we, we would all love to to pause and, and to study, but that's not a reality. But but it, it is and, and, it, and it can be um, because the city has demonstrated that um, we can pause and study an area and as it relates to uh, the impact of, of a particular development uh, to the quality of life and to the diversification of the housing stock, the retail impact. And we have that example from 2015 when we did that on Music Row. And the issue there was different developments coming in and the history being lost, right? Yeah, so that was, that was, that was a little different. Um, about the history down there, but you know the neighbors out here, um, we're fighting for we're fighting for the for the same history. We're fighting for that same quality quality of life uh, that those neighbors organized down on Music Row and the business owners and so forth uh, organized down on Business Business Row, mm -hmm. Music Row. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. As Freddie called in earlier, he mentioned bus routes or lack thereof being an issue in the area. Have you been able to talk with the folks at WeGo and say what's happening? They, they are aware. And any response in, in a positive direction? <laughs> hey, come on, Carrie. <laughs> I got to ask the follow-up. 
But let me say this, um, no one no one in this city can say that they do not know the need for resources out here in, in, in Southeast. And as, as great as the, co the, the community is, um, we've, we've endured a, a lot with 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 little with little support from 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 the city hmm. you know what we have we we are grateful for but you know those um those resources were were long overdue yeah we have to get to a point where where we're really planning for sustainability so that we're not um reactionary in 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 putting resources um out here in in the city uh, an example would be of that is you know um the the, the pumping station you know they had to to add another pumping station out here um, before they added that you know many neighbors had sitting sewer in, in in their yards no taxpayer should should have to should have to endure that and as a city we need to be proactive instead of reactive and that's what this this legislation is about is it's about asking our planning department let's let's plan for sustainability Tell us what the impact is on, on 5,000 units on our schools, on our infrastructure, and what's that cost to taxpayers? Okay, Tracy is back on the line. Tracy, good evening. Thanks for giving us another try. Go ahead. I just wanted to say thank you, both of you, for being online. And sure. what I was trying to say earlier is that I have volunteered a lot in the community and every community I've lived in, but you have empowered me to run for some type of office because it seems like that's the only way you're going to get things done is if you have a collective group of people who want to work for the same greater good for the common interest of humans. Thank you so much for, you know, empowering me to make this decision. So. Well, Hope we all see you out there in the places in Nashville where, you know, we have to work hard mm -hmm. to get this done because I love Nashville so much. Well, thank you, Tracy, for calling in. We do appreciate hearing from you tonight. I want to try to get to Michelle, too. We are running short on time. we got about five more minutes. Michelle, thank you for being with us. Go ahead. Yes, I had a question for uh, the lady on the panel for sure. Antioch. Mm -hmm. I live in Antioch, and I'm a taxpayer, a homeowner, and I just don't see any growth as far as our mall or any growth as far as businesses coming back in. All I see is apartment complexes mm -hmm. going up and overcrowding, and I want to know as as she is our representative, what is she doing directly about this to try to correct this ma matter and, and make it better for us? Because I see no change. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll let Taneka answer that. Michelle, I'm going to hang up so you can listen to your TV to hear that answer. Thank you for calling in. Taneka, I know you have an answer for that. Yeah, and thank you, thank you so much um, for calling in, Michelle. Um, the, the answer to it is 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 getting is getting the city to move in a direction for for planning. So the attraction for retail, there's a number of variables as to why certain retail will come to your your community uh, versus another community. Is your diversification in your housing stock? Is your is your is your public safety uh, metrics? Is your educational metrics? Is your disposable income metrics so a lot of those variables go into this this ecosystem of, of a community that retail look at before they come in and invest in in, in your community I'll tell you that the, the significance of this legislation um, for other surrounding counties they are now looking at implementing moratoriums um, in their respective cities uh, one is, is is Franklin that they're looking at uh, uh, implementing a, a moratorium too and and again, I'll, I'll state this, this isn't about, you know, anti-apartments or anti-affordability or trying to infringe on uh, property owners' rights. This is about us as a city uh, putting putting metrics in place, putting a plan in, in place to guide growth that's sustainable so that we can attract that retail and they'll come in and take a risk on, on the community. And I would be remiss if, if, I, didn't, if I didn't say this. That that sometimes what is what is viewed in, in that in that sector is that 
when you when you have an unequal diversification in your housing stock, they don't see you as as a as a stable community. When we mm. know that we are what we look like on paper, what we're not, and this is what this 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 legislation is about. Let's plan for sustainability. Let's plan for growth, so that we can have um, a healthy and vibrant uh, community. 10, 15, 20 years down the road. So you introduced this moratorium, this, this need for planning back in 2016. You reintroduced it last year. Here we are in 2021, voted down on the second reading. Where do you go moving forward? So um, where, where do I go moving forward? Mm -hmm. Re regardless of the vote, um, I'm not going to get. I'm not going to give up on this because the neighbors, um, um, they are they are old. They are old. They are old. Better. Um, what that looks like, Carrie. At this point, I don't. I don't know. Um, I just got to make sure that I, that I make my case to my colleagues tomorrow on on the council on, on the council meeting um, at the planning commission. Our, our neighbors did call in at the uh, council meeting, the public hearing. The neighbors did call in, and I just hope that my my colleagues uh, hear their voice as it relates to this matter more more so more, more so than than mine. Because at the end of the day, it's it's, it's really about them. Mm -hmm. Tanika, we certainly appreciate you joining us and leaving us your expertise today. Anything we didn't I always cover. always have a blast when, when you have me on. <laughs> well, good. You're welcome anytime. We have less than a minute. Anything that we didn't cover that you just want to get out there? Um, no, uh, just, just, this is about, this legislation is about just, just sustainable growth for, for the community. Great communities don't happen by, by accident. Mm -hmm. You know, they, you have to have some intention behind, behind great communities. And that's what we're striving to do out here in Southeast Davidson. Love it. Thank you, Tanaka, for joining us. You have a good night. You too. Thank you. You're welcome. When we come back, I'll tell you what's on tap for the rest of the week. Stay with us.